I thank uh, Outlook Money for uh, extending this invitation to me and uh, my gratitude also to Outlook Money for uh, talking about uh, retirement uh, planning. Not uh, many people really talk about it and it's very thoughtful of them to have uh, this, uh, this, uh, this program. Uh, you know, our life we can distribute into three parts. See, initial phase uh, that we acquire skill and knowledge so that we are capable of working. So you can put it as uh, something like 25 years. And then the next 30, 35 years one uh, works. And following that one really leaves. So retirement planning comes out that how do we leave, uh, you know, in the, in the post retirement period. You know, retirement happens to uh, everybody. Uh, so that is uh, partly because if somebody is in a formal employment, uh, obviously there is, there is a retirement uh, age. Somebody doing uh, something by themselves, uh, so there is a time, you know, physically it is not possible to continue uh, the work. And uh, people ask of all ages uh, that when I should have done the retirement uh, planning, uh, I say yesterday. That means it's already late. Uh, that when we should be we should be doing retirement uh, planning, speakers before me indicated that you know Mr. Varasha was also mentioning the power of compounding. See, we start early in life, small amounts of savings squirreled away, uh, that can really add up to substantial corpus and giving us a significant uh, you know post retirement uh, retirement income. Uh, but if you start late. Uh, but when one is young, retirement is far from one's mind. Nobody thinks that they will uh, grow old and have uh, gray hair. Uh, but when you start thinking in our mid ages, uh, you know, in your 30s, uh, it's too late uh, by that time. People ask, I want to maintain my lifestyle, monthly income of 2 lakh, uh, start saving none now and how much I should put. So they, then they get, uh, you know, flabbergasted by the number that has to be put out. But if they would have started early, things would have been uh, different. So in this scenario, where do we stand? That if you talk of the retirement uh, corpus, uh, you know, there are different players. You know, there are uh, employees, provident fund, many people would be familiar with anybody in the formal sector. Uh, insurance companies also give uh, annuity, that's a retirement saving. Mutual funds also give retirement planning. And where I come from is basically the uh, PFRDA. Essentially, you are managing two funds, uh, you know, NPS and APY, Atal Pension Years now. All that put together, if you see the corpus, it adds up to 16.5% of GDP. And out of that, that if you see, you talk about the NPS itself, which is just 3.5 to 3.6 of uh, GDP. Let's compare this number globally. That if you look at the OECD countries, uh, this number, you know, the retirement corpus average is 90%. You know, certain countries, if you look at, you know, for social security, if you look at Scandinavian countries, uh, you know, it's more than 200%. And if you see uh, uh, countries with high income, people retire at least with three incomes. You know, there is one state given pension, basic minimum pension is given. Then you get your occupational pension uh, when you are working. Uh, so employer-employer relationship, people do their own private uh, pension, all that put together. And you know, compelling narrative and the big issue globally is old age poverty. So despite having three income, uh, poverty becomes a burning uh, issue. Uh, people think, uh, you know, uh, what is there, I'll scale down my lifestyle post-retirement and things, uh, things like that. But in practice, it doesn't really happen. On that, on that basis. Actually, the cost uh, goes up, uh, both personal and social cost. If you detach for a moment from the emotional part of it, because how do you do? Because your healthcare cost goes up. Your mobility gets restricted, you need help. Uh, you need a software to drive you around and all that. So the cost really, really, uh, really, really goes up. So there is merit in starting early. Then if it is that simple, why people don't do that? You know, the surveys would suggest less than a quarter of people uh, in India, uh, they are uh, thinking in terms of retirement, doing some kind of a savings and all that. Uh, so it is not surprising that the, you know, the wealth and corpus is not really adding up 
to, to, to that, uh, that uh, process. Uh, partly, one would think it that the financial literacy. Uh, it is not uh, in India that we have financial literacy uh, really relatively low. Uh, you know, uh, the surveys would suggest a quarter of our population uh, uh, is perhaps financially literate. Uh, it is not that you have numeracy or you get a, uh, a BA, MA or PhD degree, that means you become financial uh, literate. Many people with very good degrees, you say, make a hash of personal finance. So that's what happens. Yeah, uh, greed is a different thing. Uh, as out of greed, something happens is a different issue. Uh, but uh, this is the thing. And globally, if you see uh, that survey would suggest uh, that the basic minimum financial literacy question, uh, about a third of the population uh, really are conversant uh, with that. So given that level of financial literacy, uh, it is not surprising that people really don't know uh, so much uh, about, about this. I think two things that we really would have to be uh, mindful is, one is the inflation risk. Uh, how many of you know rule of 72? Can you raise hand? Uh, yeah, I think some hands are uh, going up. See, if there's a crore of money, that's big money. Everybody is happy. Uh, one crore, currently, I'm saying. Everybody happy if you have one crore. And uh, so what happens? So if I see that the inflation rate is 6%, by going by rule of 72, that if you see, you don't need a big calculator to calculate this, uh, 6, 12, yeah, 72. So 12 years down the line, that, you don't do anything, you're one crore. That value has become 50 lakh, okay? 24 years, that has become 25 lakhs. 36 years as a working life, normally somebody would have, so that has become 12 lakhs. Would, would I be happy with a 12 lakh corpus if I don't do anything about it? So this is what it is. That is the risk. And you reverse that process so the compounding works. Suppose I take a particular kind of an action uh, that at least it hedges for my inflation. Forget about the return. So at least I protect uh, that much, uh, that much uh, money. So this is one, then the other thing is the power of compounding, really, really one would have to, uh, would have to follow in, in this whole, whole, whole process. So one thing is that the literacy that we need to, uh, need to expand, uh, financial uh, literacy. So, you know, programs like this and various outreach uh, that, uh, that, that we are doing uh, would, would, be, would be helpful. Uh, the other thing, why it is not, not really happening? would be partly because the nature of the labor force. Suppose uh, that you are in an organized sector. Here, if you see in our case, uh, at least 80% people are working in the unorganized sector. So there is no statutory social security uh, which is available to them. Once we have statutory social security is available because you are in the formal, uh, formal sector. So what to do about them? Necessarily, they would have to provide for themselves. Uh, you know, thinking that some miracle would happen is not going to, uh, going to happen. So that's a big challenge. Unlike in, in case of advanced countries where many people and, you know, uh, are in the, in the formal uh, organized uh, sector employment. So that is a, that is a big uh, challenge. The other belief that if the head of family has one retirement account, that is enough, that is a nirvana for the whole family. That's not true. So I'm talking about people who can really afford. Why don't you, if I'm talking of men, uh, that why don't you give up, uh, you know, retirement account to your spouse? Uh, they need it even more uh, because, uh, you know, the longevity of women is more than uh, men. Why don't you give it to the children? So that is how, once you give it to the children, obviously when they grow up and then, you know, they start earning, uh, they can continue that particular kind of account. So that is how we'll, 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 it needs to be uh, worked on, on that, uh, on that uh, basis. So that is one aspect that one really would have to address. And now turning to the pension account that, that we are managing, that is NPS and APY. Uh, you know, pension used to be the preserve of people who are working in the government sector. 
people, those who have gray hair, they would also recall that in some locality and village, if somebody is there, somebody is the envy of that village, would say that, oh, was Sarkari here, then he or she gets a pension. You know, it comes, a monthly income comes in. So NPS, which again started uh, for the government uh, servant from 2004, uh, and uh, now it is available to everybody. And uh, since 2009, so it is available to the corporate employees, it is available to the common person, anybody can really take, uh, take, an, uh, take an NPS uh, in, that, uh, in that account. And uh, entry barriers are also not, not, not very high. Uh, with a thousand rupees, one can open an NPS, of course. Thousand rupees do not give you a big pension, but what I'm saying that uh, there's not much of it, because it is, pension has been socialized. Everybody can really have an access uh, to the, to the, to the uh, NPS, uh, NPS account. And anybody till the age of 70, uh, because uh, these days, you know, 60 is also young, <laughs> because longevity is also going up. Even people retire uh, uh, at age 60 with a pot of money. If you get a pot of money, it runs out. Uh, because suppose we are used to thousands or lakhs. If you get in, a, in crores, we think it's a lot of money, it will last my lifestyle, uh, you know, lifelong. Uh, but uh, we don't hear happy stories, people who retire with a lot of money, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of risk, uh, including, uh, if I say, from, from your own family also, then you don't know, you cannot say, I don't have money. So that money runs out. So that's not a happy story. But if you look at pension, uh, it stays through your life. And it goes when you leave that. Nobody can really snatch it away from, from you. And then it passes on to your spouse if one has really, uh, really opted. So it is not a substitute, I would say, for other kinds of, uh, other kinds of products that we have uh, in, in the market. So I would suggest that uh, you know, those who have taken well and good, those who have not taken, I'm not doing marketing, but uh, they must, uh, may, must do that. Uh, it was said because all my life uh, I have spent in the financial sector, but frankly, I didn't have that much of knowledge about uh, so pension and retirement planning and all that as long as I had not moved to this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this job. And how do we join? Uh, there are different w ways that one can really join and the NPS uh, is that, uh, uh, you know, somebody digitally savvy, they can do it by themselves, that, you know, ENPS is there, uh, go to the net, uh, they, they can do it. Uh, those who cannot, they can do through their banks with the point of presence. Then you can, you can always open a retirement uh, account on that, on that side. And these are well-regulated funds. So as you speak, the corpus has expanded uh, to 11 lakh crore. And these are invested by professional fund managers and giving very good return. You know, one spoke about uh, equity and all that. If somebody is, you know, it gives, you can, you can make a cocktail of yours. Uh, you know, somebody, suppose he is young, can take more risk, can go in for more equity. The full equity return since inception of the scheme is more than 13.3% per year. That's a very good return if you compare uh, with any return in the, in, the, in the market. Of course, last year, uh, you know, the, uh, now the stock market is doing well, the annual return is uh, uh, 26 uh, percent. Uh, so uh, you can get, get, get high return. If somebody takes a mix of both the things, the debt equity combined, for example, let me proxy it by the central government scheme, because central government employees are in NPS, which is an equity and debt mix scheme. Uh, this gives an annual return of 9.4% uh, since inception. That's a very good return uh, if you compare with any return in the, in the, in the, in the market. So there, there are products available for, for everybody uh, in that, uh, in that uh, sense. Those who cannot do so much of a calculation uh, and apply their mind into that, we have life cycle fund. So you can just opt for a life cycle fund. Uh, so obviously in life cycle fund, what happens as you grow, uh, automatically the equity component comes down, the debt component goes up. Uh, so the risk is managed uh, in, in that, in that whole, whole process. So these are very good, very good returns. Why returns are so good? Because NPS is the lowest cost product. 
Our intermediaries always complain, you are not giving us uh, um, uh, that much of a return and money and all that, uh, you know, commission, that, that apart. Uh, but the ben uh, benefit is passed on to the subscriber and beneficiaries. So that is how the returns are high, because it's a regulated fund, uh, well managed uh, by the, by the, by the uh, professional manager, fund managers, and gives very good, uh, very good, uh, very good uh, return. Uh, so, you know, people will say, why should we have that? We have wealth, we have this, we have that, you know, different kinds of product. So I give an example that it is, it is like an Indian thali. If somebody just likes chicken, if you fill, fill the thali with chicken, it, you know, uh, that is not that palatable or delicious for the person even who loves chicken. And, but you need a little bit, little bit of uh, rice, little bit of uh, lentil, little bit of uh, um, uh, vegetables. So that becomes a wholesome, uh, wholesome, uh, you know, uh, wholesome meal. Uh, so that is how we must, to, must have. Once you do the financial planning, apart from other things, you have to have a bank account, you would have to have a goal-based, uh, uh, you, know, you know, savings for uh, uh, your children's wedding or education and things like that. But do plan for uh, retirement. I think that is what something has to come first. Somebody gets into a job market, work market, uh, then, you know, uh, essentially uh, to go in for, uh, go in for a, uh, you know, pension. That should be there uh, in the menu of uh, your savings portfolio, uh, which is there. The other good feature of NPS, uh, which is uh, there, because it's portable. It is one status neutral, that uh, whether one is employed or not, uh, you know, now youngsters don't stick with jobs because I have young kids, so I know they don't stick with a particular job for long. Uh, they, sometimes they follow their own passion. They would do, take some time off and things like that. But NPS gives you a continuity uh, that whether you are employed, not employed, you can continue your account. And it is portable. You can also give it to the other employer as, as you move. And not many people would also know uh, that if you see NPS, uh, uh, it's also residency neutral. Many youngsters go abroad, particularly people working on the IT sector and things like that. They go abroad, take a short stint of a few years and come back. So NRIs can also operate the uh, NPS, uh, uh, NPS account. So it gives a continuity. So there's no discontinuity in your service, you know, retirement saving uh, kitty. So this is not the only thing. Apart from that, you pretty well, uh, you know, put your money in the other things. Nobody's saying they don't do that. Uh, but certainly do that. And that is important because if you look at the uh, reality, currently every 10th person uh, in our country is more than 65 years. So as we progress, uh, India is a you know, fast-growing large economy. Prospects are very high in terms of the growth. Why? Because we are the largest most populous country on the face of this planet. We are the youngest country on the face of this planet. So that impacts a lot of dynamism uh, to, to economic growth. But for sure, this population is going to age as we go down the line. And before us, you see such a dynamic economy like China, what is, what is a major issue? It has slowed down considerably. Apart from other factors, the main factor is that population is aging. And this we are seeing uh, in case of Europe, in case of Japan. So this is what is going to, going to happen. If the provision is not made now, uh, it would be too late. See, the projections would suggest by 2050, where we are aspiring as part of Amrit Kal, that we will be a high-income country. Okay? So what is going to happen is every fifth person would be more than 65 years of age. So how do you handle the situation? If the provision is not made now, uh, it cannot be, cannot be uh, achieved. So you should progress. And finally, I would say that, okay, because you are saying this is a pension, NPS, of course I didn't speak much about Atal Pension Yojana, uh, which is a small ticket scheme for, you know, more of a deprived low income or low income people which gives a fixed pension of 1,000 to 5,000 rupees. And that apart, large numbers we are getting from there. Uh, but people say that, you know, it's a contributory scheme, the affordability. Speakers before me spoke about, you know, our income levels and things like that, and uh, affordability. So affordability is going to increase. We are currently what we are, we are a 
lower middle income country, meaning that our per capita income is around 2,300 to 2,400 US dollar. Okay, so it is classified as a lower middle income country. Whether we become a high income country in 2025, the, you know, people debate and discuss, but for sure, in the next decade, we'll be an upper middle income country because this income is going to expand. Uh, if, if you cross a threshold of 4,000 odd uh, per capita income, we become an upper middle income country. So affordability for uh, pension will also expand uh, in, that, in that process. So given this process uh, that we should expect with the right awareness that uh, the pension uh, you know, uh, environment and the pension um, ecosystem should really, uh, really expand. Uh, thank you once again for listening.